Now this is, of course, uh, Gallipoli. The story of Gallipoli. Many of you heard many things, but this is a reenactment of what actually happened. Uh, it was uh, New Zealand troops on the day of the landings, New Zealand troops which were part of the Allied landings on the Gallipoli Peninsula. Now that consisted, of course, of the British, the Anzac and the French. Now on the morning of the 25th of April, the Australians were landed first while the Royal Navy picket tugs at Anzac Cove. Now this is where we're uh, depicting, this is the Anzac Cove area here. We have the uh, Turks in defence. And the Allied forces, as I say, consisting of the British, Anzac and the French, will be coming up from the water's edge, up through Anzac Cove. And the action has started. A sense of rhythm. It is a little bit scary, but uh, it's nothing like the real thing. The Auckland Infantry were landed at 4.30 a.m. Then the Canterbury Infantry were landed at 8 a.m. in the morning. On April 25th, 1915. In the chaos, the units got mixed up with the Australians and the Aussies fought alongside the Kiwis. As you'll see as the uh, reenactment progresses, there is the futility of it all. Zealand is the Anzac force coming up Anzac Cove, making headway up the beaches, suffering heavy losses. You can understand in the chaos, the noise, the smoke, that units got mixed up. And that's where Kiwis and Aussies were fighting alongside each other. Battling the heavy entrenched forces of the Turks. Now the New Zealanders were subject to the accurate rifle, machine gun and artillery fire as they moved up the steep sloping bridges, as we can see at the moment. It's very hard to imagine what it was like, but this does give a sense of realism. Now the Turkish commander, quite a hard individual, his name was uh, Colonel Mustafa Kamal, later Atta Turk, who was the first president of the modern Turkey. Now, his philosophy for his men was, I don't order you to attack, I order you to die. A very hard man indeed. Progress was very slow up the slopes from Anzac Cove. The 16th Waikata Company pushed well inland, where they were sniped and killed by the Turkish snipers. Oh Big losses on both sides. A year after this event, in 1919, many of the Waikata men who were killed at Gallipoli were finally found and buried. The New Zealanders helped establish forward firing lines with the Australians. These were known later as Prince Post, the Baby 700, and Steel's Post. with the Gallipoli landings. So by the end of the first day, the Anzacs were holding on just to their positions. When faced with the enormity of this, uh, this crisis, the British general was asked, who was uh, General Ian Hamilton, he was asked what to do. And his response was, dig, 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 just dig in, dig in, dig in. Don't give up. On the first day, the estimates of casualties 
was 600 to 700 New Zealanders, of which 200 were dead or missing. You'll notice what's going on now, there's just tit for tat, tit for tat. Now this, this tit for tat affair went on for many, many months. Almost eight months of continual backwards and forwards, sniper fire, rifle fire, machine gun fire, backwards and forwards. Forward positions were taken. Many casualties were lost. So as we can see, the battleground is littered with bodies, casualties. This tit for tat went on for months and months. Imagine this, April the 25th, through all the way to December the 20th. Backwards and forwards. So it appears it's time to withdraw the troops back out. The Calipoli campaign lasted so long and they're eventually evacuated and the operations were abandoned. The total New Zealand dead, 2,777. And you ask yourself, why?